On today's episode of Badass 2000, we install our radium dual catch cans. And we get to a bit of bodywork, finally. That's right. We covered this a few episodes ago, but we're gonna run you through why we're installing catch cans again. It's a pretty common thing to do, especially on S2000s that make a ton of crankcase pressure. We were sh putting up a mushroom cloud of smoke at the track, and so we wanna vent that crankcase pressure into a catch can. These radium cans are beautiful, they're billet, they have a, a medium inside them, sort of like a stainless steel uh, scrub pad that helps separate the oil vapor from the air and trap it in the can. There's also a, a drain, or sorry, like a dipstick on them. So you can actually check how much oil is in here. Again, all like beautifully built, built aluminum. Drain plug on the bottom. They have an optional petcock drain system that you can set up, but they're gonna be mounted right here. They're so accessible. I think we'll just pop them out and drain them when we need to. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's their basic uh, design. We have one for the PCV side and one for the crank case side. So we'll literally just run them off the valve cover where those two systems are designed to run from. Unfortunately, we can't loop them back into the intake which is really what you're meant to do with a catch can system for it to be a closed loop and be therefore emissions legal and all that because we don't have an intake system to do that with anymore. So if you're doing this on your regular S2000 with a standard intake manifold, you'll loop them back to there. That way it's all emissions compliant. We on the other hand are gonna have to put little filters on the top of each of these and just let them vent to atmosphere. Strictly speaking, not street legal, but we're gonna do it anyway because we're terrible people and we wanna go fast. So you can order your radium catch can either as a single or as a double kit. So we got the double kit, so we have both the crankcase and the PCV set up in one. There's a bracket here that we showed you before that mounts to the chassis in uh, OE bolt locations. And then the secondary mount just bolts onto the existing bracket. So I will try to do this with my big old stubby fingers. Get a nut in the back there. And then once this is bolted down, we can install our catch cans and start running the lines. Well, I figure today's the day that you're gonna do an install all by yourself. Uh, well, yeah, we, how much time do you have? <clears throat> well, we gotta get to the fender sooner than later, but <laughs> if got, I figure this one is pretty simplistic. Time, I'll play at this all day long. Good. I don't, uh, I don't think I'm gonna succeed with my fingers though. I'm gonna have to get. Oh, I'm gonna maybe have, I need to come in here then. Well, I think my uh, your delicate, more slim, your delicate fingers might work, but actually, I think I got it. There you go. I See? Think I got it. This is painful for me to watch. It's painful I wanna, for me to. I want to like reach in there. Oh, I know you do. And fix it. You're like my dad when I was a kid. I wasn't allowed to do anything. Right. So, like, oh, fuck, you had no God patience. damn it, boy. You had no patience to watch somebody else. Fumble around. Come on, this is ridiculous. Alright, I gotta go. How long will the head wobble? I see it. Come on! Alright, I'm gonna turn this side. There you go, that's a good technique. Push the bolt For flat sake. against the Oh yeah, okay. Try that. Yeah. Try that. I think you were right. Yeah, that might work. All right, Three, two. Sorry YouTube for wasting your time on that. All right. <laughs> so the first can is bolted in and time to install the second one. I really like the way they've designed these brackets with the oval in the top. It can only fit in there one way and then they've got these nice tapered seats for the, the Allen bolts that they, they supply. In typical radium fashion, everything is just really well thought out. Engineered Beautifully and built. complete. Yes, it's, it's truly. There's no searching for bolts or having to go buy bolts. Yeah, it's all here. That's why we love these products. It, it is really nice stuff. And it looks great too, doesn't it? It's That's just. Right. And there we go. Complete. Voila. So. Catch cans are bolted in. Yeah. Radium also includes all the fittings you need to run the hoses. The larger diameter one is for the crankcase side and the smaller diameter one is for the PCV side. So we literally just thread those into the cans to get the party started. 
They've got a nice O-ring. Don't need any sealant on there. Okay. Next up, we've got these barbed fittings that literally just screw on to the ones we put on the cans. So those go on there and then the hose just pushes onto those barbed fittings. They also did include hose clamps, um, like OE style hose clamps. So we can use those as well. So yeah, we can just push the hose on there and then the top side will show you how that would normally work with the recirculated setup. But we're gonna put the filters into these top ports. Which we need to order. Which we need to order, yeah. So I really like that Radium uses Continental hose here. That's the sign of quality, my friends. And as per usual, we're gonna make a very scientific and calculated cut on our hose. I'm gonna say, eh, right about there. What do you think? I like it. Yep. I think that's pretty good. Just leave it a little long and that way you can shorten it if you're not yeah, happy. Yeah, that's always a good tip. And 10 snips for the win here. Look at that. Perfect cut. And now for our PCV valve here. What does PCV stand for, Peter? Positive crankcase vent. Oh, fancy. Does that sound right? It does sound right, yeah. With my somewhat of a guess good. It was a good guess, yeah. Good, we'll take it. All right. So obviously we're gonna have the fuel injectors here. I don't wanna try to touch them, so maybe I'll go like that. Route itself there. Leave just enough hose here. And what is the reason for a PCV valve, Peter? Well, it is a one-way check valve, right? So it doesn't allow intake, if there's pressure in the intake, it doesn't allow it to pressurize the valve cover. Yeah. I think. On an NA setup, I'm not sure how that works, but I think it's just to stop um, air or vapor from entering the valve cover. Right, yeah. So it only releases, wanna... but doesn't allow it to go back in. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't want the engine to be drawing engine or air in from anywhere other than through the intake system, right? Correct. All right, that's on. And here I can use the supplied radium, look at that. Hose clamp, nice. Perfect hose clamp. They even supply a hose clamp. There we go. All right, setup complete. So setup is complete. However, we're, we uh, are gonna talk to Radium, order up some filters for this. Yeah. But in the meantime, I'm gonna show you how this would look if you were routing it back into the intake. All right, I put the fittings in. Now, if we had the intake on, we just take more rubber hose and run it from these fittings here that Radium supplies. So we'd run those off. So we'd run one hose off of here, back into the intake, and one hose from the pressure, from the PCV over to the other side of the intake. And voila, now we have a proper catch can setup. Closed loop for hugging Mother Earth. We are done with our Radium catch can install. We've just put a little zip tie there to hold the hoses together and route them to PT spec. So now we are gonna show you a, well, a rad mounting bracket from Lee Customs. Our friend Wen Lee contacted us on Facebook or maybe emailed you, Pete? Yeah, email. Emailed us and said, hey, I make these custom brackets for the S2000, for the S14, some other chassis. Do you mind if I send you some? And we thought, all right, let's do it. And the reason we wanted them is because our uh, driver's side bracket was actually missing the that isolator bushing that goes in there. We just jammed some like rad hose down in there to kind of soft mount it in our usual kind of a ghetto solution. So now we actually have a proper rad bracket with the bushing in there. So we will properly mount our radiator and as you can see we have a choice of either the black finish or the raw aluminum finish. They're made of uh, 6061 aluminum 
and uh, I believe Lee does some other like custom small part manufacturing. So if you're ever looking for somebody in the, I think he's in like the New York area. I don't recall, I think but so. his website is Lee Customs, lee-customs.com. Right. And these are actually kind of cool. They are pretty cool. Now the question is, what color that will is we the go with, Dave? Well, the aluminum looks nice because it matches the radiator. I know. And but, I'm always all about the black, but I'm like, you know what, the aluminum might... Black looks good too, but I don't know. Let's uh, put the aluminum on there. I think the aluminum looks better I personally. I think so. Let's do the aluminum one. Just matches the rad nicely, huh? Brushed aluminum is the way to go. So yeah, I thought we were going to use the black too, but sometimes you just got to... Not going with black? Well, sometimes you gotta, you know, see what see what looks good on the car, rather than just assuming that we're always gonna like the black stuff better. Look at that. Very nice. There we have it. Our aluminum radiator brackets are installed. Our engine bay is one step further to looking badass. Badass. <laughs> That's right, we gotta paint that VTEC solenoid. And then we've got our badass 2000 battery tie down coming from Ragen at uh, R Theory Motorsports. He's out in Scarborough area. We should have that soon. We've been showing you some pics of it on our Facebook page. I think it's gonna look pretty damn cool. So yeah, dress up stuff done for now. What do you say we get to bolting on some downforce fenders? I like that. So step one PT, I guess, is removing our hammered OE fenders. Yeah. Starting with the fender liner. You're yeah, just... I think we're gonna take the fender liner off first. And uh, our plan is not to remove the front bumper. Just cause I'm lazy and why remove the front bumper if you don't need to. Fair enough. I, and I've seen photos of cool kids on the internet rolling around with, on it, with an S2000 actually, with no fenders and the front bumper, so I think it's manageable. I don't know if they pulled it off first, put it back on. Long story short, we're gonna try to leave the bumper on. <laughs> All right, um, so you wanna work in there and I'll pull the top nuts off the top of the fenders here? Sure, sounds like a plan. So we've got a bunch of uh, 10 mil fasteners here. I think I can handle that. I hope so too. It's in the rust zone. It's in the, oh, there's no rust on this car, this car's mint. Talking about rust. You want me to hold this so it doesn't fall on your head? See, see everybody? That's my hand holding the fender. That's how much I care about Pete. Okay. Ready to go or what? We're keeping people waiting here. Oh. I think there's a bolt. No, there's a bolt up here. Uh oh. We ready to party? Oh, we are ready to party. Look at this. Giant fender coming off. Look at that. Oh yeah. Look at that indeed. Nice. It's gonna be a shame having to retire this sweet fender roll job that we did. <laughs> that was a pro spec fender roll. That's right. At its best. Say hello to our Downforce USA front fenders. These are 30 millimeters wider than the stock fenders, which is a big part of why we're installing them. We want to run a wider wheel and tire package this year. But as you've seen, our other fenders were also pretty badly beat up. So it's also just a way to make the car look better. And a few reasons why we chose these fenders, because there are other options on the market, but we really like the fact that Downforce makes these things to be OE quality fit. So we should be able to just bolt them on. And as long as we're happy with the fit, we'll just send them out to paint. So there won't be any fancy body work or you know, difficulties fitting them. They also do a lot of clever stuff with their mounting points. For example, uh, you can see this mounting point here is actually made of carbon fiber. So they've reinforced a lot of their mounting points to make the, the thing as strong as possible. They've also, uh, uh, the FRP construction in certain areas is uh, reinforced as well so that they're really rigid. So it should be a really strong piece and uh, we're expecting just to bolt them up and go basically. So. I'm gonna throw them on the car now just to make sure we're happy with it and then off to paint they go. So, this may take me a few tries just because. Well, the bolt holes all look like they line up nice. 
one detail I like about them too is this uh, this ridge here that runs down the top of the fender. It's actually a bit more aggressive than the stock fenders, so it's like a sharper line to it. So it kind of just makes the fenders look a bit more aggressive. Which I think is kind of cool. But as you can see, it's designed just to bolt right up to the, any front bumper. So either the AP1 or AP2 front bumper like we have, it bolts right up. And it should bolt right up to the factory mounting points underneath here. But it's got the wideness over the wheel and tire where we need it. So well, let's try bolting them up, right? Let's get some bolts in there and let's see what happens. All right, let's do it. Well, as you would expect with a fiberglass fender, we have to just adjust the... Just a couple of the bolt holes. That we do. Everything gets lined up nice. Yeah, that'll fit like a glove, and this one fits perfect. Do these go there? Uh, yes, yes. Those, those long. long OEM Honda bolts. Part of the reality of the AS2000 is a lot of the bolts are not original. The rally shop that put this thing together originally just kind of used what they had. So, unfortunately, we're just dealing with crap bolts, but maybe someday we'll put the, the right bolts back in. Oh, crackety crack. Yeah. I'm not going to put that one in. There's no need, really. For the time being, anyway. For the time being, exactly. We're just test fitting these puppies. Yeah, once we get this bumper up a bit here, lines up good. good this is going to line up. Okay, it should be all right there. Yeah. And what's our gap look like back here? Pretty much the same as uh, the other side. More than we'd like, but you know what? I think eh. this, this side's pretty good, actually. Looking good. It's a slightly bigger gap than the OE fenders, but hey, race car. 30 mil. 30 Over. mil, that's all we care about. That is all we care about. 30 mil. Look at those big, juicy fenders. It's gonna be fun to stuff a whole bunch of wheel and tire under there. I like what I'm seeing. What do you think, PT? Like 305s, 295s? How big are we gonna go? I think if we fit 275s or even uh, 265s, I'll be happy. Yeah, that'll be a good step up from the 255s we're running. That and a wider wheel should really up the front front end grip a bit, I think. Well, grip all around, really. But and forget what? about wheels right now. All I've right. got more important uh, news. Oh, look at that. And can you guess what this is, Dave? Well, I can only because we put them on our FRS. Those are the Downforce Carbon Fiber Side Splitters. Yes, indeed they are. Nice. And they're gonna look pretty damn awesome on our S2000. Downforce, as always, is spot on with their fitment. And check this out. Yeah. Yet again, fits like a glove. Yeah. No gap. It just forms to the, the bottom of the chassis perfectly. Yeah. I mean, this is gonna look super awesome. Uh, I think it helps aero a little bit. For I sure, guess. yeah. It'll prevent air from spilling under there and disrupting that, that you know, low pressure underneath the car. Yeah, so, so. It's, it's functional. Yep. But for us, it's more of an aesthetically pleasing look. It kind of takes up, at least for me, the gap here that you have with a larger diameter tire that's sticking out. Yeah. It fills that in nicely. Yeah, and it'll kind of line up nicely with our front splitter. Yeah. It'll create that sort of more cohesive look. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to be putting this on actually in this episode or in the near future until we finish the fender work up front and in the rear, which we'll show you in just a second. This beautiful white Japanese boomerang is a legit ASM rear over fender. We ordered them from our friends at Evasive uh, Motorsports out in California. It's the real deal, boys and girls. No knockoff parks, parts here at Speed Academy. 100% legit, bro. On the old ass 2000. That's right. We were tempted to buy the knockoff ones, but at the end of the day, these aren't that much more expensive and you can feel good about it. You're supporting the creators who designed this piece. And I gotta say, it does fit extremely well, doesn't it, Pete? It certainly does. Let's drop it on here like that. Fits underneath the... Uh, Corner. Look at that. Bam. It is tight. That is Japanese build quality there for you. Much like the downforce piece, it is made of FRP. And uh, 
Unlike the downforce piece, this is gonna require cutting up the stock rear fenders to maximize clearance here. So these give you an extra 25 mil of uh, wheel and tire clearance. But to get that, we're gonna literally have to cut this, uh, weld it back up, fill the gap up with some uh, foam, and then rivet these suckers on there. These fit so well, there's really no test fitting required. So in, in a future episode, we'll show you how to modify the OE fender, and then uh, we'll take these to paint with the front fenders and we'll bolt them up. And that wraps this bad boy up, huh? Yeah, I guess that's a wrap for today. We don't have anything else. Uh, we're still waiting on those fuel injectors. Come on, Paul, y'all. Get us some injectors. We need those injectors need to fire up these Gen V ITBs. We need the juice. <laughs> and not OJ. Not OJ. Hey, Hobie, look, you're on YouTube. What do you say? I want to go fast. I want to rip some VTEC. Yeah, ITBs and VTEC. Ruff, ruff.